Hello Oilers fans, Austin here with just a quick news update, and I'm also going to touch on the Young Stars as well, but my news update is basically going to focus on Evander Kane, Darnell Nurse, and a tweet that Bob Stoffer put out yesterday in Penticton, where he basically alluded to the fact that the Oilers are going to be in the market for a second pairing right D with some term left, and usually when Bob Stoffer puts out a cheeky little tweet, sometimes there's usually something in the pipeline that's being worked on right now, so there could be a trade before the season starts, before training camp starts, we'll have to see, we will We'll get into that. And of course, I am going to give my general thoughts on the Young Stars competition so far for Edmonton. If you've missed my last couple of videos, I did do pre and post games on their games against the Vancouver Canucks and Calgary Flames Young Stars. So towards the end of the video, I'm also going to discuss that. My thoughts, some notable players who I think are playing well, some players who I'm expecting more from heading into main camp. And then, of course, I'll also touch on main training camp, which opens up Wednesday, September 18th. And I'll give a breakdown on the first couple of games that I'm looking forward to in preseason. If you like today's video make sure you hit that like button if you really like it make sure to subscribe to the channel daily oilers content as always let's jump into it First things first, the Nurse and Kane injuries. Now, Mark Spector, this was from a couple days ago, and I did touch on it in a recent video, but I did want to talk about it again today because I think it's important. Um, Darnell Nurse was skating today. This was on September 13th. It has been a regular team at uh, skates this week. As first reported by Tom Gazzola, Nurse is expected to most miss most of preseason schedule with an injury. He may play the last game or two if cleared by doctors. And Evander Kane is scheduled for surgery in the next 10 days or so. That will be to repair damage from the sports hernia that he carried through most of last season, I am told. Post-surgery prognosis should shed light on the recovery period and, of course, how the Oilers will approach the salary cap. As we all know, Evander Kane, he's had that sports hernia. Why he hasn't had the surgery yet, why he didn't have it yet last season before the trade deadline or even earlier in the season... I will have no idea, but it does sound like he's going to get this surgery done, and it doesn't sound like they're going to put him on LTIR. It sounds like they're going to put him on regular IR for as long as they can to accrue cap space before they put him on LTIR. And then, of course, Bob Stoffer's tweet that I mentioned earlier in the video, great to see Oilers key management people and head coach Chris Knobloch all in Penticton. Fully expect the Oilers to be in the market for a second pair right D, dot, 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 at some point, dot, 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 preferably with a little term left, dot, dot, dot. Right there, that is Bob Stoffer doing that little that little wink at the camera, letting Oilers fans know that there's something probably being worked on right now behind the scenes. And I'm not sure who the defensive target is going to be. A defenseman that has some term left, plays the right side, can play second pair minutes. I have no idea who he's alluding to, but don't expect what we have coming into training camp to be finalized because it sounds like things could just be getting started. It does sound like the Oilers uh, and Stan Bowman, Jeff Jackson, and crew are busy trying to make something work, trying to get a trade, trying to improve the defense defensive depth because of Darnell Nurse is going to miss significant time here with his injury. If he's not 100%, you've got to find a way to fill that hole on the second pairing D spot. And whether it's a right D or a left D, we'll have to find out. So that's very interesting. The Bob Stoffer tweeted that out last night. And I did want to make note of it because when Bob Stoffer is teasing at player acquisition, he's usually the first one, right? He's usually the most in to know of the Oilers media members. It feels like it's key management that feeds Bob Stoffer specifically. So I did want to talk about that. Let me know who you think the Oilers are going to be targeting or who you think they should be targeting. A player that still has some term left can play second pair D. I'd be curious to know your thoughts. Now to segue into the Young Stars tournament so far, the Oilers, they are 0 and 2. Uh, shots for percentage, 47.4%. Goals for percentage, 16.6%. They have one goal in two games. Their power play is running 0 for 5. Their penalty kill is 5 for 6. Uh, they have not looked great. However, this is not a Young Stars roster that I think many expected to compete and play really well and, and really drive offense. However, there are some offensive players on the Oilers that I find just aren't really contributing or producing. I will say notable players in the positive side. Matt Savoy, he got in there last night. Game one, I thought Matt Savoy was very quiet, very perimeter. You didn't notice him much. He didn't generate a whole lot of chances. However, last night against the Calgary Flames Young Stars, Matt Savoy showed why he is a very highly touted prospect, why I personally really like him, and why I think he could even push for a roster spot this season. He has all the tools in his toolkit to be a terrific player. He has speed. He has skill. He has great offensive awareness. He set up Carl Berglund for Edmonton's only goal, and he was all over the puck in the offensive zone all night, and even defensively, he was playing well. 
Another notable player was Sam O'Reilly last night against the Flames. I thought Sam O'Reilly, you know, everyone touts his two-way game. That's kind of what he's known for with the London Knights in junior, his ability to play a solid two-way game, and he projects to be a second or third line shutdown center, and he showed that on full display last night. There were numerous times where he was stripping players, pickpocketing. There was a two-on-one that he hustled back and broke up by diving and breaking up the play in the middle of the ice. Sam O'Reilly, he has looked really good in his two games defensively, and hopefully he can continue that as he continues to mature. I don't foresee him making the roster this year, but that's definitely a player to look out for next season. And then, of course, the other two notable players that I have really enjoyed their play are the two goaltenders that have started for Edmonton so far, Connor Unger and Nathaniel Day. They have both played great. Nathaniel Day, if it wasn't for his play against Vancouver, that would have been an 8 or 9 nothing game. He played phenomenal hockey, and Connor Unger, I think he played really well against the Flames last night. The two goals that beat him, he had absolutely no chance on on either of them. He made some terrific saves in close in the crease. Connor Unger, uh, really good, really good defensive uh, player here. And again, that's another player that could push for a backup role in Edmonton this season, depending how Calvin Pickard plays. I don't think he'll beat out Calvin Pickard. However, Connor Unger, he has that ability and he has the skill to be able to do so. <clears throat> now, a couple underwhelming players for me personally as an Oilers fan. Matt Vay Petrov, this is a player that was very highly touted a few years ago in junior, but since he hit that professional level playing up against men, AHL, that skill has not transitioned. He is a very perimeter player. He does not get inside. He has a great shot, but he never gets to areas that he can use it. He gets bumped off the puck easily, and Matt Vay Petrov, so far in this Young Stars tournament, has looked very disappointing. Um, it seems like every day his NHL chances continue to drop. It's tough to judge too harshly because of a Young Star tournament. This is not something that we should be judging these kids too hard on, but for Matvey Petrov, you expect them to play a little bit better, be a little bit above their class, be above some of the players that were drafted uh, later than them. However, Petrov, he has not shown well. Another underwhelming player for me is Max Wanner, and not because I think he's played poorly, but because I don't think he's really asserted himself defensively the way he did in the AHL with Bakersfield last season. Wanner was such a good instrumental piece on that defensive group with Bakersfield, and so far in the Young Stars tournament, he's had his moments, but he also has moments where he's being really exposed. He's getting beat wide. He's losing puck battles, and that is just, I'm going to assume that's just rust. That's just off-season rust. I think once he's part of the main training camp with the NHL team and things really ramp up here. I think Max Weiner is going to improve. I'm not worried about his development. I still think he projects to be an NHL regular one day, possibly this season as a call-up option. So nothing to worry about with Max Weiner, just my thoughts on his play so far. Another def uh, underwhelming player is James Steffen. Of course, that is the son of Patrick Steffen. He had 50 goals for the Portland Winterhawks last season, and he looked really good. He's a bit of a late bloomer. However, so far in the Young Stars tournament, he hasn't really showed anything. I think he has one shot on net. He hasn't really made any plays that I've noticed that were either good or bad. He's been very quiet, and I was expecting a little bit more. I was hoping for a little bit more from James Steffen because I watched him a lot on Portland last season, and I really liked his play. He has a great, great shot. Uh, he's on the number one power play unit right now, but they're just not finding any looks for him. Hopefully, he can find a way to get his game going once main camp opens. And then, of course, defenseman Mark Lejoy or Lejoie off of the uh, he played for the Oil Kings last season. He led the team in goals with 26 as a defenseman. He is tall. He is speedy. He has a great shot. However, when it comes to the defensive side of the game in this Young Stars tournament, I just don't think he's played that great. I'm expecting a little bit more from him if he's in the lineup tomorrow against the Winnipeg Jets because that's next up for the Oilers in the Young Stars tournament. They play Winnipeg tomorrow at 12 p.m. Mountain, a nice early game. I will have a pregame report up for that before the game starts, and I will also do a postgame recap, and that's what's to be expected expected from all my videos moving forward when it comes to game days. I'll always have pregame reports, postgame recaps. And then main training camp, that opens up on September 18th, 2024. And the first three preseason games for Edmonton, September 22nd against Winnipeg at 4 p.m. Mountain. That is a Sunday. And then on Monday, September 23rd, a split squad game against Calgary, Battle of Alberta in Calgary and in Edmonton. There will be tons of players to watch in those two games. It'll be tough to do a post-game recap on both and have both games on both my monitors. So that'll be fun to try and figure out the content for. That is pretty much it for my news update and my general thoughts on the Young Stars tournament. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below. I want to hear who you think has impressed 
asked you during the Young Stars tournament. I want to hear who you think the Oilers should be targeting in a trade on D. And of course, uh, let me know any of your other thoughts. I love engaging with all of you. You've all been great. Your support means the world. Make sure you hit that like button. And if you're not yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe. And most importantly, tell someone that you love them. Fight like a kid. Fight like Ben. We'll see you soon, Oil Country. Take care.